Welcome. Welcome to all of the operations faculty that we have on the line today. My name is Chelsea Hicks and I'm a project coordinator here at the Network for Business Sustainability. And there's a couple of other NBS folks who are helping put on today's show. I'll just really quickly introduce them before we get into the content. Um, we've got Jessica Kilcoin, who's helping out behind the scenes with the webinar technology. And Maya Fishhoff, our knowledge manager, um, who, who's also helping and, and is behind creating a lot of the knowledge resources that I'll, I'll mention to you today. Um, so before we get started, what I'd like to do is just take a minute and familiarize you with the technology. Um, as you probably read in the advertising material, today's webinar will be interactive. So we will be seating discussion with three fantastic guest speakers. And after each of those speakers, there'll be two to three minutes where you can ask questions. Uh, similarly, when the speakers have finished, we've reserved about 10 or 15 minutes at the end of the webinar where we'll actually invite you, the faculty on the line, to share your own activities and best practices for teaching sustainability. So to make sure that you're going to be able to participate, um, I'm going to direct you to the instruction slide if you haven't already started reading it. Um, please make sure that your computer's microphone is turned on and the volume is turned up. You will remain muted for most of the webinar, um, but at those times when you're invited to share questions or comments, we'll unmute you. And so the way that you need to signal that you'd like to share something is to raise your hand. And you can see that button blown up on the screen. So just to make sure that everybody's comfortable doing this, can I get all of um, the people on the line to raise their hand now? Good, David Barnett, I see your hand up, wonderful. Lots of hands going up. Great, we're at about 90% hands, so I think it should be a good conversation. So I'm going to put your hands down for the time being, but feel free to use that function during the question period and the open conversation. And just so you know, um, you will not be using your video, but you will see our speakers by video today. And the entire webinar will be recorded so that anybody who's missed it can access it online later. All right, and without further ado, um, let's get going. So as you're all well aware, today's webinar is meant to give you specific strategies, teaching activities like cases, projects, field trips, um, assignments that you can use in your own operations courses if you'd like to teach more sustainability. And so um, before we really get going, I think it's important that we set a working definition of sustainability for the purpose of this webinar. Now, I know there are as many definitions of sustainability as there are people, um, but to set the context for the webinar, we've taken a really broad definition. And so anything that combines social, economic, and environmental impact of business um, can be considered sustainability here. And I think you'll recognize a lot of common subtopics like ethics, corporate social responsibility, poverty alleviation, or stakeholder engagement. All of these types of uh, common topics are fair game. Um, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Network for Business Sustainability, who's hosting this webinar, um, because I'll also be offering you some of our resources, which are really applicable in the classroom. So NBS, um, basically, we drive sustainable business practice by connecting researchers and managers. And our network consists of over 3,000 academics and managers. And because we're half publicly funded, all of the research translation that we do is available freely online and we encourage you to use in your classroom. Um, I want you to understand a little bit about how we generate our knowledge so you understand if you're going to use it, what you're putting in front of students. And so basically we've got a, a pretty rigorous four-step process. We start by working with uh, managers to identify knowledge priorities. So every year we gather our leadership council members, which consist of 18 major multinational companies, NGOs, and government bodies who are all sustainability leaders in Canada. And these 18 members come to consensus on Canada's top 10 sustainability challenges. And based on these challenges, we generate various research projects. 
or that brings us to step two, synthesizing prior research. Uh, most notably, on the top two challenges, we generate systematic reviews. So these are year-long research projects which cover um, all research ever done on a particular challenge. Next, step three, because we know that managers don't speak academic, we translate the, um, this academic knowledge into something actionable by managers and by future managers. So this takes the forms of um, frameworks and graphics, like you see at the bottom of the slide here, checklists, or other tools that can help um, managers actually put this research into practice. And then finally, because of our public mandate, we really do disseminate our resources quite broadly. So I'd like to give you a highlight of the types of um, work that you'll find on our website that could be applied for various uses in your classroom. So based on our annual leadership council meeting, we generate a challenges report every year. And that basically fully describes that list of 10 um, business sustainability challenges. Something like this might be really useful if you are looking for um, relevant real world problems to seed student projects. Um, next, we've got our systematic reviews. We publish two of these per year, and these are 100 page rigorous research documents on um, relevant sustainability topics. We also distill these to 20 page executive reports if you're looking for something a little lighter weight. But really these uh, systematic reviews can be applied if you're looking for a comprehensive reading to cover a topic in detail. We've also had faculty use our systematic reviews um, as the basis of entire lectures or a series of lectures. Uh, if you're looking for a, a reading or something light to complement what you're already teaching, you might want to consider pulling on research insights. These are catchy one-page summaries of academic articles um, and basically would make an easy read for students to complement something you're already doing. We also offer primers, which are three to four page summaries of um, of fairly basic sustainability topics. Um, one example is valuation of sustainability activities at the firm level. And then finally, if you'd like to be a little bit more provocative or really get students wheels turning, um, we have a thought leaders forum. And for this, we invite really high profile academics and managers to share their views, their forward looking views on current sustainability topics. Um, and I'd like to just sort of help you visualize a couple of resources uh, that would be really relevant in the operations classroom. And so I've got two examples here. One is um, a one page research insight called reward honesty, not performance of Chinese suppliers. So this summarizes a research article out of Stanford and suggests that managers should not incentivize good environmental performance in their supply chain, as this can encourage dishonesty, but rather they should focus on encouraging good communication and honesty of suppliers and reward that. Um, and again, if you're looking for something a bit more robust, um, we recently published a, a systematic review on embedding sustainability in organizational culture. Uh, and this 75 page report summarizes 179 articles over 15 years. And it really gives a good introduction to the definition of sustainable corporate culture and would give students really concrete practices that they could use to achieve that culture. And you'll get the pleasure of meeting the author of this report, Stephanie Bertels, who's on the call today. Uh, and so what I want to leave you with is if you think any of these resources will be relevant in your classrooms, they're all available online. So all you have to do is visit www.nbs.net. All of the resources are there. Um, if you'd like to be kept up to date on what's coming out regularly, you can subscribe on that same page to receive our academic newsletter. Um, and if you're trying to navigate to find content that's relevant to you, You'll see at the bottom of the page that all of our content is organized or bucketed in three different ways. So you can search the same content by topic, by business function, or by publication type. So I suspect for you, you would really be interested in searching by the business function operations. And so that's enough about me and the work of NBS. Now I'm going to turn it over to our three guest speakers. So today on the line, we have Dr. Rob Klassen from Ivy Business School, 
Dr. Gal Raz from Darden School of Business, and Dr. Stephanie Bertels from BD School of Business. And they'll be speaking to you in this order. So to get us started, I'd like to introduce Rob Klassen, and it's a real treat to have Rob on the line. He's got a wealth of, of teaching and research experience in this area. He's taught at the HBA, MBA, and EMBA level, uh, and teaches both core operations courses um, that include sustainability, as well as dedicated courses such as sustainable development. Um, and he's also got quite a history of teaching awards. So in 2009, Rob won the Wickman Skinner Teaching Award. And in 2008, he won a Page Prize for his curricula in environmental sustainability. So I'll stop there, Rob, and I will turn it over to you. OK, well, thank you very much for the kind introduction, Chelsea. Just uh, I thought by way of, of sort of setting up what I try to do within the context of teaching is to just sort of briefly provide a bit of background in terms of at least my perceptions of what students are thinking about when they walk into the classroom. And it certainly varies a little bit depending on whether the context is a required course, part of a core course versus an elective and so on. And so often I see students that are a bit skeptical or don't really understand what sustainability is all about. And so I think it's important to recognize that and communicate to students that in fact firms increasingly are under a magnifying glass by a whole variety of different stakeholders and so there's lots of discussion but not always a lot of substance going on in many firms. In addition as we sort of think about how firms have acted over recent years and, and even months if we think about recent media reports, uh, we can think about certainly firms generally being held up to great scrutiny and often not doing a great job of managing some of the risks and some of the issues related to sustainability. And finally, the framework that I tend to focus most on but need to explain to the students is this idea of a triple bottom line. And it really is expanding beyond the economic to include the environment and social, as I'll talk about in the next few slides. And so the analogy that I think works particularly well, if I can just have the next slide, is to think about how one learns to ride a bicycle. And so you can think about early on the historical setting for bicycles it really had a whole variety of different formats, a whole variety of different uh, approaches, and ultimately individuals were left up to their own devices to figure out which one was best and why and so on. And I think that's much of what we're trying to do in the area of sustainability. There's many different perspectives and managers are really struggling with what's the right bicycle to take and, and design-wise, and then what's the skills involved in actually making it work to uh, either for transit or pleasure. And so this, this, I think, provides a framing device in terms of thinking about what we're trying to do in the classroom as well. If I can have the next slide, please. So if uh, one thinks about sort of sustainability, going back to the early slide that Chelsea put up, is really this idea that there's multiple aspects. And, and I'll focus just on two, environment versus social. And certainly depending on the course and the type of format that you're using, it may make much more sense to focus only on the environment or focus only on the social within a topic-based sort of approach, which I'll talk about just briefly in, in some following slides. But I think on the other end of the spectrum, we can think about combining these within the triple bottom line. And so you can think about where your course, your topics, and your discussion might be situated within this bigger uh, framework. If I can have the next slide. So if we think about sort of from a topic perspective, and, and my assumption is that all of you are familiar with the core operations topics, possibly use one of the textbooks and so on, we can think about many of the sustainability topics as slotting very easily against some of the existing core topics that we would consider within operations. And so for example, if you're looking at a session on quality management, ISO 9000 is typically mentioned, Six Sigma, other sorts of quality tools. And it's very easy to extend those types of topic-based discussions to consider environmental or social criteria as well. And so total quality environmental management, ISO 14001, are often mentioned even within our core textbooks at this point in time. And then one can extend some of that discussion to cases or otherwise. Supply chain management, similarly a very core topic for operations. And again, many of the textbooks now include green criteria within their discussion of how we talk about supplier selection. Product design. Again, we hear about different ways of looking at product uh, modularity and so on. And typically, one can think about building in green criteria, whether it's related to the reduction of hazardous materials or so on. Again, these all fit very consistently within that. And so, a case like Herman Miller's uh, discussion around some of their chair design and development, classic case, works very 
easily within the product design module in any sort of core course. However, I think the more inter integrated uh, perspective, if I can have the next slide, really offers uh, a greater ability to draw the students into what sustainability is all about. And so my suggestion based on personal experience is to focus most on the environment, first of all, because that often is, is much easier to measure. It's often much easier to align with the historic tools related to quality and product design, and then shift to the social bottom line before trying to integrate the two. And so at least by way of, of beginning, I suggested some topics there, thinking about global warming, uh, green washing or green marketing, I guess one might call it, uh, as it's related to operations, and then shifting to the social side, things like labor practice and so on within the supply chain. We can also think about sort of then beginning the transition towards a more holistic integration of those topics. And the framework that I use with my students uh, that I've kind of uh, shifted to over the last few years is to try to talk to the students about a business model approach. Often a classic historic business model tends to treat environmental issues or social issues as a constraint or as an external criteria that you have to meet. And what I'm really suggesting, at least in part, of, in terms of the case selection, in terms of the topic and integration that I'm doing, is to think about it more holistically about what needs to be redesigned. And so common examples are moving from services to a more or sorry, from a manufacturing model to a more service-based model, thinking about servicing the poor, thinking about particular green market segments. And each of these allows a much more fundamental rethink of what the business is really trying to accomplish. And so if I can have the next slide, please. So as you can see on this particular slide, what I'm really trying to suggest is that there's both organizational leadership elements that drive what goes on within the organization and the structures and the tools and the capabilities. And there's also external factors in terms of what's the competitive context look like, what are competitors doing, where's the technology landscape at at this particular point in time. And so collectively, those can contribute to a dramatic rethinking of the business model. And the definition I use for business model is quite basic. It's not meant to be overly complex, but it's really this idea of creating, delivering, and capturing value. And in the process of doing that, one can decide what exactly sustainability can contribute or can potentially uh, offer to customers within the business model. And the three elements that I focus on in terms of objectives or outcomes is really around sort of this revenue enhancement, risk management, as well as cost or efficiency. And so kind of the three elements serve as potential levers that one might think about as they redesign a business model. And ultimately all three of them then can contribute to a stronger triple bottom line. So let me offer kind of three case examples that I think uh, can help in terms of thinking through some of these. And these are all new cases that I've just uh, recently been working on over the last year or so. Uh, we recently finished uh, a case in Monsanto looking at how their business practices in India have been developing and evolving. Clearly, India has different contextual settings, different regulatory public policy issues than one would confront within developed countries like Canada, the US, or Europe. And so trying to think through what their technology might do or how they might sort of bring that into the marketplace, despite the controversy that sometimes surrounds it, is often very important. Britannia, a second company, also coincidentally based in India, where we're now sort of thinking about their evolution in servicing the poor, particularly uh, as they think about ad adding micronutrients to many of their food products. The last case, Walmart, looking at building sustainability, rethinking some of their business model around integrating environmental criteria into that particular space around efficiency, around working with suppliers in a collaborative way to come up with greener technologies that can be deployed within their supply chain and in particular their distribution center. And if I can have the uh, next slide. And so collectively what I'm suggesting is that we rethink the bicycle analogy to look more along this idea of working in tandem with other stakeholders, other partners in terms of thinking about the operating system, the supply chain management system. And ultimately all of that needs to be kind of conveyed, communicated over a series of classes to the students. The last point I'll close with, just in terms of the, the time that I've been given here, is to think through this idea of how your teaching and research agenda might be uh, dovetailed together. In terms of thinking about where your natural strengths lie and looking for those topics, those issues as kind of a starting point in working through these things. And so one can think about teaching materials really seeding 
new research ideas, or at least I've certainly found that in my own uh, experience over the last couple of decades working in this area. And with that, I'll turn it back to Chelsea. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Rob. So please do leave your audio and video on because uh, we'll now open the floor to questions for Rob. Um, so if you have anything you'd like to ask Rob, please do, um, as a reminder, raise your hand using the button to the right of your um, control panel. And I'll see when you've raised your hand and I'll call you by name and unmute you. Um, please be sure to introduce yourself, so by name and institution, so we know who you are. And please keep your comments fairly brief so that we can um, get as many questions as possible. Okay, I see Prince VJ. Uh, Prince, I've now unmuted you. Oh, I unmuted you. Okay. Prince, you're on mute. Prince, if you can hear me, please go ahead and use your audio to share your question with Rob. So that time I have worked it for, I have given rise for testing only, it's not by default it is showing, sorry. Sorry Prince, I, I believe that was cut off, would you like to try one more time? No, you can carry on, sorry. Okay, okay, uh, next I see Kathy Danda with her hand up. So um, Kathy, I've now unmuted you, you can go ahead and ask your question. All right, Rob, thank you so much for that. I was wondering, is a stand-alone course on sustainable operations better, um, or do you recommend trying to integrate these topics into an existing course on operations? We have an operations course that's a core course that all the MBA students have to take. Thank you. Right, uh, an excellent question. I think certainly, depending on the, the degrees of freedom you're given within your program, the approach might take different forms. But certainly if a required core MBA course, we try to, by way of example, introduce a couple of cases uh, that touch on sustainability related topics within our own core MBA course. And so in fact, I use the Monsanto case in our, with our core MBA operations course to talk about technology evolution and as well sustainability related to how we address controversial technologies within that space. Um, if you have the latitude, I certainly think the elective is a great way to start to more broadly build on the business model idea and develop that into a much stronger foundational piece that you can communicate to students. Realistically, trying to talk about redesign business models is often quite challenging within a core course just because you have so much other material that you need to cover within a fairly short period of time. All right, thank you. Thanks, Rob. And I think we'll do one more question. This one came in um, by the text box, and it's from um, Thierry Katobe Joel. And he asks, where in the semester do you teach sustainability? Is it as a separate chapter, or do you weave it in throughout the semester? So I'm assuming this is in the context of a core course. Are you Right, I, uh, certainly uh, another great question. I think in terms of thinking about where it fits in best, my own temptation and, and approach is to use it much more towards the end. Our course happens to focus very early on on things like process analysis, uh, fairly micro level topics, and towards the end we shift to more strategic supply chain oriented issues. And so sustainability fits much better with those particular topics. Supply chain, one can talk about uh, carbon footprinting, one can also talk about labor practices in the supply chain, or alternatively operation strategy, thinking about technology evolution and customer safety areas like that. Great. Thanks a lot, Rob. Um, I think that's all the time we'll have for questions for Rob. So at this point, Rob, thanks so much. I'd invite you to turn off your webcam and your audio. And I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Gal Raz. He will be our next speaker today. Gal's joining us from the Darden School of Business. And he also has quite an extensive um, history and resume of teaching and designing curriculum for sustainability and operations. So Gal has worked at both Darden, where he currently is, as well as at the Australian School of Management. And to give you a couple of examples of the type of work he does, he's currently the head of a course for sustainable supply chain management. So this is a core course, but has a module dedicated to sustainability. 
Um, he's also designed and taught a project-based field course that brings students, Darden students, to Israel where they work with clients on actual sustainability projects. And in recognition of his work and, uh, and the great sustainable innovation work happening at Darden, he received a um, Page Prize in 2011 for, um, for his sustainable innovation curriculum. So without further ado, Gal, the floor is yours. Thanks, Chelsea, and uh, thanks for uh, inviting me uh, to this. It's always uh, fun to uh, discuss uh, teaching and, and also hear about what other people are doing about teaching. Uh, what I thought of doing in the time that I have is, is really kind of focusing on, on where you, uh, where would you have sustainability within different part, type of courses and, and also kind of thinking about uh, the type of activities you can do in each one of those. So it touches on some of the things that uh, Rob already mentioned. I mean, we already started the discussion about you know, sustainability in core courses and I'll touch on that and then I'll talk a bit about uh, also what I do in, in my supply chain elective as well as uh, in the global field course that you mentioned. Uh, at the Global Innovation course uh, where students go to Israel and then I have some uh, other thoughts. So starting thinking about the in, in operations core courses, uh, I think as kind of, you know, we already heard from the question uh, to Rob and also from what Rob uh, said, one of the challenges is, and it really depends on how much uh, a freedom you have in, in changing, uh, Chelsea if you could move to the next slide. Uh, so one of the issues is, is how much freedom you have in, in, in changing and adding cases uh, into a, an operations core course, and, and we have you know multiple faculty uh, teaching in the core course from from different kind of you know more senior, less senior, and so on, uh, and and therefore just adding sustainable kind of sustainability cases is not always easy. And one of the things that I, I found that is is a good way of trying to introduce sustainability. I mean, you can argue it's kind of getting sustainability from the back door, but uh, I think it kind of gets to the topic at the same time that uh, you also get kind of operation methodology. So while the things that I mentioned before Rob mentioned about you know, quality, I think you know within lean you can talk about eco efficiency uh, and things like that, as well as obviously within supply chain management. But one of the things that we've done is try to introduce cases that, on the one hand, teach uh, methodology, but in the context of sustainability. So just to give you kind of a recent example, uh, I developed a case called uh, Eastman Triton, together with a colleague uh, Tim Kraft uh, from Darden. Uh, Eastman Chemicals, a very big corporation, developed a new co-polyester uh, uh, that one of the interesting things about it, it is competing in the polycarbonate market, so we have some capabilities to uh, be able to compete in that market of plastics, uh, but it's BPA free, so I'm sure a lot of you are already aware of the, the whole BPA uh, scare uh, and the whole issue about uh, how it can harm children, harm development, and, and so on, and one of the advantages of this kind of plastic that they developed was that it doesn't contain BPA. Now, the decision they had to make was not directly related to the BPA, but to the fact that they had to decide about a new product coming into the market, deciding on the prices to charge, the quantities, and the target markets. Uh, now, when you think about the target markets, obviously it's very much about uh, what kind of products uh, it will be used for. So if you think about baby bottles, if you think about uh, water bottles, as well as other kind of, you know, uh, type of products. So the, when you look at the case teaching goals, on the one hand, the goal was to teach something very kind of operations uh, type, so joint pricing and quantity decision making, kind of news vendor with pricing, under capacity constraints. So the firm had to decide, uh, well, for the next two years we have a certain capacity and which markets do we go to, and in each of those markets, you know, do we charge, you know, low price, high price, and what kind of, you know, quantities are we going to sell there. But at the same time, you have to consider, well, what does it mean that we're introducing this product? Uh, do we want to come into low prices, taking into account that it's this kind of product that also has this advantage of, kind of sustainable advantage of not having BPA? And what we do is in the middle of the case, so after kind of, you know, we're talking about all the issues and mentioning somewhat the BPA, we try not to make it the main kind of, you know, topic at the beginning, then we show them a video of the, uh, where it really became, kind of came into the public eye uh, in the Today Show and there was kind of a, a video of a few minutes where uh, created a big kind of, you know, uh, a big rush of many companies to go to Eastman and say, can we get now the, the kind of the Triton instead of the polycarbonate we're using? So it's kind of like changing the environment and then asking students, well, would you change now your decision? So how is the fact that, you, you know, this is kind of becoming something that now everybody are aware of, uh, are, is, it's gonna, is it going to change the market you're trying to go to, the prices you're charging, and so on? So this is just kind of one example uh, that you can do in, in, in within a core course. Now again, if you have more latitude, then I think that a lot of the uh, strategies that Rob mentioned are obviously uh, very useful. Uh, if we can go to the next slide uh, now. 
So the, the second uh, a, a topic I want to talk about is the teaching sustainability in a supply chain elective. And again, thinking of the question that was asked before, usually in this kind of a course you have much more latitude into in introducing and making sustainability really an integral part of, of the course. Uh, so both including multiple cases, in, in my, my kind of you know, case I have probably about a third of the cases are related to sustainability. Uh, so in addition to cases like the Eastman case that uh, you can teach in this kind of an elective, uh, a, you, I also looked at other cases that fits very nicely within uh, the context and kind of taking the, you know, again what Rob mentioned about the triple bottom line and thinking about business model, but looking a bit, for me it's very much connected to what I teach from the supply chain management perspective. So when I look at the case that I use, the Sandvik case, looking at reverse supply chain, it fits with the whole context as well. When you think about supply chain management, you think about, uh, you know, do you want to be responsive, do you want to be efficient? Well, what happens when you have a reverse supply chain that you're deciding to manage? Uh, how do you manage this reverse supply chain? Do you manage it differently than the forward supply chain? Do you want to integrate the two? So try to think of, of the reverse supply chain, in a sense, as a supply chain by itself, and think about the implication both from economic perspective as well as environmental perspective and social perspective. Uh, another uh, a, a case that I've done recently uh, related to the kind of the corporate responsibility aspect, so uh, I'm sure a lot of you about Apple Foxconn and kind of and, and all those kind of you know issues. Uh, so I use both a case, uh, a kind of a Starbucks case that talks about trying to uh, for Starbucks to go with the farmers, so working directly with the kind of the suppliers in the in the higher uh, part of the upstream of the supply chain. Uh, but at the same time, uh, a, a, do they have responsibility to work with them, helping them becoming kind of you know a, you know more for fair trade, uh, help them become more uh, responsible. Uh, and you can think about the Epic Foxconn. I actually use uh, a, a, a video from John Stewart that introduces the, a, a, the whole situation with Apple Foxconn. It's called the Fear Factory, uh, if you're looking for it. I found it a really great way of, you know, the students love because it's, it's very funny, but it just really touches on all the points of, you know, how much is Apple responsible for the fact that people, you know, committing suicide, uh, you know, in Foxconn and how they're taking care of those kind of, you know, issues, as well as their environmental responsibility and so on. Uh, the last couple of things I want to kind of you know to mention. One is uh, a, a, I talk about human channel logistics again within kind of you know context of of you can think about within the social context of sustainability. Uh, as I look at it, and I had a kind of a guest speaker from the Red Cross. I try to combine within the course both you know mostly cases, but we had cases simulation games as well as kind of you know, guest speakers. Uh, lastly, a case that I'm working on right now, which uh, I'll, I'll talk about it a bit later because it's a it's a nice combination of of uh, kind of research and teaching, which. Uh, as Rob mentioned, is something that is always important to try to do. This case actually came from a research paper that I was working on, uh, and then from this paper, we kind of decided to develop this case to talk about government incentives, uh, rebates, subsidies, taxes, and how they kind of you know uh, affect sustainability. So when you have to decide, uh, a, do you want to impact uh, new products within kind of you know green energy? Or in this case, we're looking at electric vehicles. Uh, you know, how should the government go about that? Uh, the next uh, slide, uh, if I can uh, get to that one. Uh, so I'll just mention, uh, Chelsea already talked about uh, a, the course that I do, a global uh, field course. Uh, within that, one of the nice things, as, as, uh, as, as mentioned, this is a course that uh, we have our first year uh, going for, a kind of you know, three-week course. Uh, it comes like a double course, and they spend one week at Darden and then go to, uh, a, a, for two weeks uh, in Israel. And in addition to meeting, meeting industry uh, officials and government, and we do a lot of the work there, a lot of the meetings are around you know, water and, and energy. Uh, the students also work in a project with kind of, you know, with uh, startups. Uh, a, a, and a lot of the project has been on green energy supply chains in the water industry. Uh, and I'll go to the last slides uh, a, based on the time I have. So just uh, my final thoughts. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to mention is, again, the interaction between research and teaching that I alluded to. So Eastman is actually an example of a case where we worked with a company, developed the case, and at the same time started working on a research paper that we're now kind of you know, finalizing uh, that looks at the decision of the supplier as well as the decision of the customers in the system manufacturer have to decide if do they want to replace the substance of concern, in this case, kind of you know, BPA. Well, Chevy Vault was actually the opposite. It started from a research kind of you know, project that then we translated into a case. But I find that this interaction is very important. Uh, in addition, in order to introduce sustainability in the curriculum, I've used kind of final papers in my supply chain elective. There is a final paper, uh, final project for the for the students, and a lot of them uh, choose sustainability, and this is something that I encourage. And lastly, we have also interaction with companies uh, on individual projects for for students that I've, uh, that I worked on. So I'll finish here uh, a, a, since I, my time is up, and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions.
Chelsea, I don't think we were hearing you. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder on that. Um, thanks for a great talk, Al. And it was really interesting to see the parallels um, in terms of yours and Rob's talk, really reinforcing how um, mutually beneficial research and teaching and sustainability can be. So with that, um, we'll open it up to questions. Again, if you have a question for Gal, please raise your hand, or you can type it into the box and we will read it out for you. So I'll give everyone a minute to process and, and generate some questions. Okay, it looks like we've got a question that's coming in in written form from um, Gemma, and she says, "What situation or what simulation games do you use?" So the simulation games I use are actually within supply chain uh, context, so not necessarily directly related to sustainability. I use uh, a few simulation game, one that is kind of an extension of the beer game that looks at uh, a other decision the firm has to make about pricing and and uh, and uh, competition, supply chain contract. And I also use a negotiation exercise that I developed that a supplier and a retailer has to kind of uh, think about uh, how to negotiate and decide on the right supply chain contract. But so I haven't introduced yet. I mean, these are all games and simulations that I actually design, and and I haven't actually got yet to introducing sustainability concepts within those games. But it's definitely something that I'm thinking of. Uh, so probably in the future I'll do that. Great, thanks, Gal. Uh, and we've got one more question from Dima, who would like to know whether you target undergraduate or graduate classes for your um, teaching sustainability modules. So, so let me mention in Darden we only have MBA students. So all the courses that, that we actually have, we have a full-time MBA program. We have an executive MBA program where uh, the students kind of you know are older and they come uh, for every three weeks, kind of you know for the weekend. So it's a domestic program. And then we have a global executive MBA program. Now, one of the nice things actually about the Global Executive MBA program that I, that I teach in is that unlike the core operation course where you have multiple faculty and therefore you have to get everybody on board on what you want to teach, in the core course for the Global Executive MBA, which I teach in, in India uh, actually, I, do, I am able to introduce some of the sustainability cases that I mentioned because I have more freedom. So these are kind of you know, my courses so I can introduce similar to what Rob mentioned. Uh, a, closer to the end of the course, I introduce some of the cases I discussed, like Eastman and like Sandvik, is kind of like you know looking at some of the topics of supply chain within the context of sustainability. Great, thanks a lot, Gal. I think that's all the time that we have for questions, unfortunately. So we'll leave it there. Uh, and with that, I would like to introduce our third and final speaker. Last but certainly not least. Her name is Stephanie Bertels, and she's joining us today from the west coast of Canada, so Beatty School of Business, and so happy to have Steph with us today. Um, she has been, she's got an excellent history of teaching, and I think it's something that she's is really close to her heart. She teaches an MBA class in um, sustainability, which is part of the core capstone project that all BD undergrad or all BD MBAs go through. Um, she also teaches at the undergraduate level, where she teaches a Managing for Sustainability course, which is about sustainable operations. Um, throughout Steph's teaching, she has a lot of emphasis on experiential learning, so really putting the students in a position where they can apply their knowledge working with real clients on projects. And uh, she's been recognized for her teaching by the students as being uh, on BD's teaching honor roll every year for the last five years. So she's really one of BD's top 10% of faculty um, in terms of teaching. And so with that, Steph, um, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks a lot. Um, so if we go to the first slide, uh, I thought since we've had such a great introduction already from uh, Rob and from Gal on, um, thinking about integrated, that I would cover a couple of assignments that have worked well for me over the years. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about a life cycle analysis um, project that I do, something that I call mapping the sustainability space. And I also thought I would talk a little bit about um, the, how I've tried to integrate real clients into the course and um, have the students help them work on improving the sustainability of their operations. So if we go to the life cycle slide first. Um, what I do, and so we have uh, um, uh, three different courses actually that I, that I teach in. The, the MBA um, course is at the end of our program, and 
uh, we're really lucky that, um, that we have a, a full course in sustainability that is part of our core MBA program. And it, it's the course that comes right before the final strategy course. Um, and so it's meant for students, similar to what um, Rob was talking about, is this idea of starting to layer on sustainability after you've got a mastery of some of the core concepts. Um, so after students have already taken their finance, their accounting, their um, operations courses, it's a chance um, to really layer on some of the, the uh, very strategic issues that come along with sustainability. And so as a priming exercise, and sorry, at the undergraduate level, then we've got this course in managing for sustainability and a new course that I've developed that's explicitly in sustainable operations. It's part of a um, new certificate program that we've launched at the undergraduate level. And as part of those two courses, both the MBA course and the sustainable operations course, I use this life cycle analysis project as, as a priming project um, to get people thinking about um, uh, what the different issues might be, what are the most material issues, and so what I do is I have every student in the class take a different product, and I encourage them to take something very simple. So, for instance, we've had um, nurses in the course that have taken nitrile gloves. Um, we've had um, students who work in the fashion industry that have took a pair of blue jeans, um, and in this case, uh, this student took milk. And um, what they do is I ask them to map out the life cycle of the product, thinking about um, the key inputs and outputs throughout the process. And that includes not just um, the materials that they use to make it, um, and they think about things like uh, water consumption along the way, transportation, um, inputs of energy, uh, waste products, but also a social piece to it, um, thinking about um, Who's making the products? Under what conditions are they making them? Um, are they being paid a fair wage? Um, uh, are the uh, proceeds going back into the local economy? So this is a way for students to really start to think about all of the issues. And as they go along, um, so if you're going to run a project like this, a couple of things that I would advise. Um, one is make sure that you you leave um, a couple of class sessions or a couple of, uh, of weeks if you've got it to letting them grapple with it and figuring out this idea that um, you know initially it's going to seem like an easy project then they start digging into it and it becomes a huge project and they get really stressed out because they start to realize that everything connects to everything and they start asking questions about how far am I supposed to take this um, do I need to get down to chemical formulas do I need to understand the uh, roots of, of um, all of these different uh, products and really grappling with that issue of boundaries and then the core piece of it is as you'll see on here with the red circles is that they need to identify um, for their client um, what what are the key sustainability issues that could be most strategically important for them over the next uh, decade and so what are the things that most need to be changed? And the goal is not that they have to figure out how to change them, but just that they have to establish um, what needs to be better understood about those issues in order to start thinking about a solution. So that first assignment I find really gets people um, starting to, to integrate and think about the different ways in which um, energy and water and social issues interact because uh, you can start to reduce your, your water impact, but in doing so, you might raise your energy impact. So they start to see the connections. So if we move to the next slide, the next project that I um, have students do is what I call the mapping the sustainability space. So one of the objectives I have in my class is um, really having students leave with a sense of how sustainability might connect to their own career trajectory. So I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, pretty aware of the fact that the majority of the students that leave our program are not necessarily going to be going into sustainability roles within organizations, but I want them to think about um, how they could take this into their own role. So again, what I ask them to do is each choose their own company, a different company, and um, the reason I do this each time is because it allows them then to have lots of conversations with each other and support each other's learning without that sort of competitive element where they might be giving something away. 
So uh, in this case, the student uh, uh, was someone who wanted to become a product manager um, very much, and, and the dream company that she wanted to work for was Pepsi. And so she did her project on PepsiCo. And so what I, I run this project as the final project, the final individual project. And what it is is, is an integrative project where I ask students to reflect back on all the different topics that we've uh, covered during the, uh, during the course. And they're told that they have five minutes to make a presentation um, to a new incoming board member. And that that board member has been brought on because they have a certain expertise, whether it be in information technology or HR, um, but that they don't have a strong background in sustainability and that uh, they need to give this board member a, an orienting presentation in five minutes of what are the material issues for the company, um, what kind of systems do they have in place in terms of management systems and operational controls, uh, what kinds of certifications um, has the company uh, embarked on and what ones might they want to pursue in the future, um, what are some of the key challenges that the company is um, uh, trying to grapple with with regard to sustainability? Um, where do they fit in comparison to their peers in terms of rankings and ratings? What kinds of partnerships do they have? Uh, what are they doing in terms of reporting on their sustainability progress? And then also, what are their key recommendations? So what's, what are the key recommendations that this student has uh, for the board in terms of things that they should be paying attention to or doing in, in uh, both the short term and the long term. And so this really gives them a chance to integrate the material that they have and apply it in a way that's um, close to their own setting. And so the final project um, that I do is, if we, next slide, is that um, I work with real clients to improve the sustainability of their operations. And so over the past, we've worked with a number of different companies. Um, and this past semester, my students worked for a company called London Drugs, which is a, a very large uh, um, uh, drugstore uh, in, in Western Canada. And um, what we did is we worked with their chief operating officer and their head of retail operations, and the students got to know the business by um, interacting with these executives. And then the idea was for them to identify material issues for the company and also to help the company think about how they could start to report and, and act on these issues. And so um, just as a quick, um, uh, you know, what have I learned about that? Um, I don't know if, if people on the line have done a lot of work with real, real companies, um, but the learnings that I have certainly are that um, iteration is really important. So if you take the project and you divide it up into a couple of different steps and you run those at the individual level um, so that students can really kind of get that core foundation. And then what I do is towards the end of the course, I combine them into groups and that gives them a chance to combine together the strength of their various individual projects and produce something that is very high quality for the clients. And so we've found that to be very, very successful. Okay, we, we still need your audio, Chelsea. We're still Thank you, very thank you for that. Um, so thanks a lot. Okay, Can you yeah. hear me now? Yeah, I think there's a, a bit of a lag from when I unmute. So thanks very much, Steph. Um, so at this point, we'll field uh, a couple of questions for Stephanie, if anybody has something that they'd like to share. So there is one question that came in from Dima, and I think she asked something that's really interesting and relevant to um, collaboration for, for teaching. And so Dima asks, do you work with faculty in other colleges, for example, engineering, to develop a sustainability minor or multidisciplinary courses? Uh, and I know, Steph, that you have a lot of um, experience with collaboration in general, so maybe some advice around that. Yeah, so in fact, um, uh, I am in the process, so we, we this um, sustainable operations class that I taught, in fact, uh, is open both to students in the business school and also schools and uh, students in the faculty environment. So what we did was we created a certificate program that is open both to the business students and to our faculty of environment students. And so our business students take foundational courses in uh, life cycles, ecosystems, um, social geography, those kinds of things. 
and then our um, and then uh, we bring the faculty of environment students into the classroom. And I've found that that creates a tremendous amount of richness, um, and it, it brings a whole different skill set into the room, which is really useful. Um, so if anyone uh, wants to hear more about the work that we've been doing on to create the certificate, then I'm, I'm happy to share that. Um, the other thing is that um, the, with the success of that, we've decided actually that we're in the process of trying to create a joint major. And so that's going through our Senate right now in order to create a joint major between the faculty environment and the School of Business. Um, and, you know, I guess my primary learning would be um, uh, that uh, it's, uh, while it's, you know, it's, it's tricky to navigate, I think that uh, if you reach out across to other disciplines, um, they're actually quite eager. We found that um, most of the faculty environment students really would like to incorporate some kind of business component into their degree. And so, um, it, it was doable, and I'm happy to share how we did it. Great. That's perfect. So we've got about eight minutes left, so I think I'm going to leave questions for Steph there. Um, and at this point, uh, with our remaining time, I would love to invite everybody on the line to share their own best practices. So what um, activities or strategies have you found really worked well? And I know that I've seen a, a couple questions come through from faculty looking for recommendations on textbooks. So certainly if anyone on the line today, um, including our speakers, have recommendations for textbooks, that might be one place to start. Uh, and just so you're all aware, um, while, while you're thinking of your comments, anything you might want to share, um, this will be available online today, uh, or online tomorrow, so you'll be able to refer back to cases people have recommended, and, and there will um, be a space where you can share and list cases, resources, so it'll be a, a standing resource for you. All right, I see Steph's come back on. Did you want to take a first crack at that? Well, I was just going to um, say about textbooks. So I, I share the kind of the um, dilemma of finding the right textbook, and um, what I found is sustainability, especially in the operations side, is changing so rapidly that um, I've not found a textbook really that can keep up. And so one of the things that I've started to do for my students is, um, uh, and I use Evernote for this purpose, but um, some of you may have a better course management software that would, would better facilitate this, is I have a tendency over the year to, to um, just collect uh, different um, uh, guides and resources and, and um, uh, articles uh, that I combine together into a, a set of readings because I find that um, things are changing so quickly and, and students have a real appetite for very current uh, information. And so while I, I don't have a particular textbook to suggest, um, uh, I think there are some fantastic resources out there, and, and without seeming too um, self-serving, I would, I would point you to the NBS resources as being um, some extremely high-quality ones that can definitely bridge that gap. Great. Thanks a lot, Steph. Um, uh, just a quick scan for hands. Don't be shy. If you have ideas, I'm sure you do, um, please share them. Uh, I see Rob coming online. Did you have something that you'd like to share, Rob? Yeah, I, just one thing I might add to Stephanie's very uh, insightful comments is really this. I have used one book uh, fairly, fairly recently called Making Sustainability Work by Mark Epstein. It's a short book. It's suitable for, I guess, a bit more uh, of an applied approach. It goes through a whole series of different areas. And I wouldn't argue it's operation specific, but if you're offering a second year elective uh, or elective in that area, it does work fairly well. Um, although the other options are certainly a collection of articles, HPR, or SMR, and that sort of thing, too. Great. Um, so it looks like we're a little quiet. Oh, I see a comment by Mark Reno. Wonderful. So I'm... I'm oh, sorry, Gal. I, I've unmuted Mark Reno for his, his next comment, but did you have something, Gal, that you wanted to add? Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to kind of, I guess, echo I, 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 what, what uh, Stephanie said before. I mean, I think also I've, I've used a variety of kind of you know cases and readings. I think that the question is, I think if you teach a whole sustainability course, then it's easier obviously to teach kind of you know a, a complete uh, book. But I think if you're using a module within a course, obviously if you have some cases, I think there are a lot of complementary readings, and I think uh, that you can find out there, and, and I'm sure where people uh, may have around. So I think that's uh, usually it's good to have something specific on the topic you want to teach within sustainability. Great. Thanks a lot. 
Okay, Mark, um, I, I see your hand is up. Mark Reno, I've now got you unmuted. So feel free to um, share your affiliation and your comment. Thank you, Chelsea. I'm at uh, Ivy Business School, where I teach business ethics. And in that course, I use a, a framework that integrates uh, approaches to ethical problem solving, reasoning, and action. I'm wondering if uh, uh, Rob, uh, Gal, 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 and Stephanie actually use an integrated framework or model uh, for sustainability problem solving and decision making. And whether that kind of provides an organizing uh, framework uh, for teaching the various themes of the course. Great. Thanks for that. Does any of our speakers want to tackle that? Steph, okay, perfect. Go ahead. So um, the integrating framework that I use is, is my own from the Embedding Systematic Review. Um, and uh, and that, um, that review was about how you embed sustainability into operations. Um, it looks at embedding into organizational culture, but it covers uh, a range of activities, um, including integrating into business processes, um, into product development, into uh, learning and assurance, and, and all sorts of different pieces. Um, and so I have a tendency to lead off with that uh, framework. And then what we do is, is it has four different quadrants um, based on uh, the objectives, whether it's fulfillment or innovation, or um, the mechanism that you're going about it, whether it's a formal means or informal means. And so that allows me to kind of float around and um, dig into, in the formal fulfillment category, for instance, we can dig into things like reporting and business processes. Um, and then later in the course, when we get into the innovation piece, then we can pick up some of the stuff that Rob was talking early on about. Uh, new business models, and, um, and so that's how I, I orient um, my own course. Great. Uh, and I've just got a comment that came in from Richard Mills um, on textbook recommendations and he says that he's used the book The Sustainable MBA which has a chapter dedicated to sustainability and operations and he's found that works well. So for those of you looking for textbooks that's The Sustainable MBA. And it looks like we have time for one more um, comment. One more comment if anybody's got something to add. Uh, we've got something from Matt Polsky. Um, Matt, I, I know that I saw you had your hand up. I'm going to try unmuting you so that you can share your comment yourself. And Matt, you are now unmuted, so please go ahead and share. Uh, hello, I'm not sure this works. I've never tried this before. Do you hear me? Oh, okay, good. Um, let me catch up to you then. Yeah, well, your audio is loud and clear. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't expect you to say yes. <laughs> okay, um, this is this is my observation. Um, despite the, the the emphasis on the, the triple bottom line, the emphasis uh, you're still talking about at the end of the day creating business value. Uh, there's not much mention of the state of the world or society and how the the viability of the business is ultimately related to them. As Patagonia has said, there's no business on, there's no business on a dead planet. Now, once this is realized, then then perhaps the, this emphasis on business value is appropriate, but informed by what's really at stake, and the result might be more motivated or creative students who realize that part of their role in business is actually to help the greater society, um, even in an operations course. Anyway, that's what I think. Uh, does anybody have any comments on that? Matt, thanks a lot for sharing, and I would really love to field comments on that, but unfortunately we're right at 12 o'clock, and so I may have to, I'll have to cut it there, um, but on the next, on the next slide, um, I'll direct you to a website where, again, this web webinar will be posted, so you'll be able to view it, and I'd invite you to carry on conversations like comments on, on Matt's perspective, uh, and that's www.nbs.net 
slash knowledge slash operations dash teaching. And don't forget that last backslash at the end. That's really important to getting where you need to go. Um, so again, view the webinar, share your ideas. If you have any questions about NBS resources, again, they're available free online, but do feel free to contact me at chelsea.hicks at nbs.net. And with that, I think I will leave it there. But you will, you'll find that when you log out, that you'll be asked to complete a three-question exit survey. If you do have a minute or so to complete that, that will really help us make sure that um, we're providing um, as much value as we can during these webinars. Thanks a lot for your participation. A special thank you to all of our speakers, and I hope it was helpful.